Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's truth. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for everyone watching and listening to the sound of this broadcast right now. We receive our daily bread today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you because your influence rests upon everyone, even as they watch and, and listen. That they will hear your voice and they will understand you. Let this be a moment of healing and transformation for them. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Now we are we are in First Corinthians chapter 14. We finished chapter 13 yesterday talking about love. Praise God. Now let's let's go on to 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 1. It says, follow after charity. Now the amplifier says, eagerly pursue. See, he, he's a follow, you know, just follow. He says, eagerly, eagerly pursue and seek to acquire this love. Make it your aim, your great quest. What does it mean to acquire this love? Doesn't God love us already? He is not saying, um, talking about God's love for you. He's saying, you get in to begin to function by the love of God. So what's he saying? Copy God. Act like God. Do just like God will do. Function in the same love that God functions in. That's what he's saying. You know, that's why in Mark, Mark 11, 23, Jesus said, have the faith of God. Now, that's actually what Jesus said. No, no matter what he said, have faith in God. He's actually saying, have faith like God. Have faith like God. That's, what that's the actual meaning of what Jesus said. So now he's saying here that, look, eagerly pursue and seek to acquire this love. Make it your aim, your great quest. And earnestly desire and cultivate the spiritual endowment, that spiritual gift. So he says, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. See? The first thing you need to... Remember when he finished chapter 12, he says, I'll show you a more excellent way. And then he now says, love is the way. Now he then says, follow after love. But hey, hey, don't just say, all I'm concerned about is God loves me and I love God. That's all I'm concerned about. All these things that they do. No, no, no. He says, follow after charity and desire the spiritual gift. Desire the manifestations of the spirit in your life. Desire it. See? Now, why I say desire? Because you have the ability to desire it. And when you desire, God will grant your desires. So don't just say, I, me, I don't have. No, don't say, I don't have. Desire it. What do you want? Talk to the Lord about it. Say, Lord, I desire to, to flow in the realm of the Spirit with you. I desire to be, you know, because love is easier when you are functioning in love for any of these gifts to come forth. I have learned many things when I'm trying to help people spiritually. I'm telling you, that's the main, listen, that's where I really grow. Now, that because I have formed an attitude that I don't take two situations alike. See? So when, when I'm talking to someone, trying to solve an issue with someone, I, I go before the Lord and I'm like, Lord, how do we deal with this issue? And guess what? The Lord is going to bring a wisdom to me. And many times I've never assessed that wisdom before. And I'll go, Lord, really? And says, yes. I never knew that. So yeah, that's me. And that's how you should deal with this issue. So thank you, Lord. And, and we get into it and, and solve, solve that problem. <laughs> Praise God. It, it's sweet that way. The same thing when you pray. I'll tell you something. When you are praying, how you know that you are praying in the Holy Ghost, or how you know you're, you know you're not just talking to yourself, is when the Lord begins to give you utterance in that prayer that you're praying. And I was praying with a family recently, and we're praying over the phone. And the Lord began to give me a certain kind of utterance. And I just went ahead and gave me instruction. Oh, this is what the Lord is saying. Pray like this, pray like this, say these words, say these words. You know, and then we, we finished praying, and everybody was happy. And a few days later, 
you know, I was visiting with them. And, and they said, hey, thank God for that prayer because this is this particular situation that, that, was, that was prevailing at that time in our minds. I said, oh, no wonder the Lord was giving. I was wondering, what kind of utterance is this? <laughs> Praise God. Now I understood why the Lord was saying, pray like this. See? That's a gift of the Holy Spirit. It's a desire. It. Now I learned something new in that. Now what, what, what do you mean you learned something new? Next time, when, when now, now in this case, they didn't tell me the situation that was going on at that moment in their minds. But the Lord who knows all things dealt with it. Now, tomorrow someone may tell me, oh, this is the situation I'm going to. Now I've grown in wisdom already. All I need to say, Lord, can I apply the same principle here? And if he says, go ahead and apply it. Oh, I apply it based on knowledge. And then I still trust the Holy Spirit to give further utterance unique to that situation. Now that's how these things work. That's how we minister to people. Praise God. So, he says, full after charity and desire spiritual gift, but rather that you may prophesy. See, he says, look, oh, when you see the word prophecy, you know, people just, ah, see, I don't, me, all this thing about prophecy, I don't want to be prophesied, I don't want to make a mistake. You know, sometimes people are scared of prophesying. He says, I don't want to be prophesying now and tell somebody that the Lord is saying he should go to London. Meanwhile, he's supposed to be going to his village. I don't want to, you know, please, please, I, I'm, I'm scared. You know, you hear believers say, I'm scared of those. No, no, you shouldn't be scared. He says, desire spiritual giver. Then he says, rather you may prophesy. The word prophecy here actually means you may teach the word of God, just like I'm doing now. That you may t desire to teach the word of God. Because that's what prophesying is. You are explaining the thoughts of God's mind. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, what's the point saying God's mind without being able to explain it? So, prophecy is teaching it. Oh, okay. Now, look at, look at him. Oh, oh, it's even here. Praise God. He say, he say, eagerly and seek to acquire this love. Make it your aim, your great quest, and earnestly desire and cultivate the spiritual endowment gift, especially that you may prophesy, not as interpret the divine will and purpose in inspired preaching and teaching. That's the teaching ministry. You know, you know, people don't know the teaching ministry. They know oh, the prophetic, the prophetic. This thing, the prophetic means. You know, people don't understand it. The prophetic and the teaching goes together. They're actually the same. Because you are bringing from heaven what men don't understand. And now if you are not able to explain it, then it means you were not given authority by God to, to get into that. You know, sometimes a gift can be working. But there's another thing that has to do with authority. See, if, 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 if you don't have authority... To manifest that gift, you will hang. You know, you prophesy, someone is prophesying and telling you everything, and then he, he doesn't provide any solution. Now, what happened? He wasn't given authority to go into what he just did. By the giftings, he can see. So he can see what he's seen. And that, in that realm of seeing, even a false prophet can easily do it. The, how you know that God is involved is when he goes beyond seeing and goes into explaining and teaching. Praise God. All right, then he says, Verse 2, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God, for no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. What's he say when we pray in tongues? When we pray now, this is talking about the, the sign of a believer. When you begin to speak in other tongues in your place of prayer, he says, we are not speaking to men, we are speaking to God. Why? Because no man will understand you. But then in the spirit, you are speaking mysteries. Now, is that those mysteries, are they important? Yes, they are important. For... But he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. 
So it says, when you are dealing with people, it's better you teach, it's better you prophesy than speak in tongues. So you don't come into a gathering and, and for example, you're the preacher, and then you come and say, oh, shakala brabada, broko zopadi kaba, rakaba baba. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Let's share the grace. I believe every one of you have enjoyed this service today. <laughs> he says, don't do that. That's what he's saying. See, he says, it is better. Now, now he's not saying don't speak in tongues. He's saying, look, it is better that we prophesy than we speak in tongues. Now, we speak in tongues on our own. Sometimes when we come together, we speak in tongues. But when we are done speaking in tongues, how do we benefit one another when we come forth with revelations and teachings from the mind of God, from that place of the Spirit that we were speaking in tongues? You don't know that. Now, for example, you're praying concerning a job. Do you know the moment you begin to speak in tongues, you know, and now when I mean speaking in tongues, I'm not saying you just blabbing, what you think is tongues. I'm saying speaking by the Holy Spirit. When you are speaking by the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, you know something that is true. You are speaking the solution of that issue right then. That's what you're doing. Now, what do you need next? You need the gift of prophecy. To do what? To interpret. Now, you know, sometimes you need the gift of interpretation. No, you just need to begin to interpret what you're saying. And from the place of teaching, the Spirit of God begins to visit you. And then you begin to understand, you know, new thoughts about that issue. He, you begin to understand where to go and what to do, how to put that letter, how to put up that proposal. Oh, I'm telling you the truth. Spend time praying in tongues over your issues. And then when you're finished praying in tongues, he says that rather that you may what? Prophesy. Say, Lord, thank you. I receive understanding. I receive the gift of prophecy right there in me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He that, verse 4, he that speaketh in an unknown, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edified himself, but he that prophesied edified the church. Do you see that? When I speak in tongues, I'm edifying myself. But it may not benefit anyone. Doesn't mean it's bad. No, it's just that people are people came, you know, people came to the service to be edified. People came to the service to receive instructions. So you must be. Uh, mindful of that to, to make sure you give but the one who prophesies who teaches is edifying the church I would that ye all speak with tongues but rather that ye prophesy for greater is he that prophesy than he that speaketh with tongues except he interprets that the church may receive edifying now why did he say the one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues he's, he's saying to, to the congregation or to other people, the one who teaches, the one who prophesies is of more value to them than the one who just speaks in tongues. So if you come here and speak heavy, deep, you know, heavenly, angelic, mysterious tongues, you know what I'm talking about, and you finish like that and everybody just say, oh boy, did you hear those tongues? Those tongues were something else. And then that's where it ends. You didn't help anybody in that place, praise God. He said the only way that will be effective is after doing all that, you begin to interpret, which is possible. Okay. Which is possible, you interpret. So when you are speaking those heavenly tongues, I'll tell you what to do, begin to design your heart, Holy Spirit. You know you're not just giving me these things alone. There are people here that need to be edified. So I receive the interpretation of these things that I'm saying right now. And I tell you, most times that's happened to me several times. While, while, while I'm slowing down in the tongues, utterance is coming in my own understanding and teachings are coming in that place. That's why when preparing for a meeting, you spend time praying in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I think it's all, I just realized that. Praise God. So listen. Don't leave home. I tell people this. At least one hour in tongues every day. Try it for straight two weeks. And write me to tell me what your experience was like. Two weeks. Start today. Count 14 days from today. One hour 
speaking in tongues. I'll tell you what, before you start, say, Holy Spirit, can you just give me utterance right now for my day? Just give me utterance for my day. And begin to pray in tongues. One hour in tongues. You know what? And when you are done, say, Holy Spirit, I walk into the interpretation and the meaning of what I just said. And see what your day is going to be like. Oh, God. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.